Hey, welcome kiddos. Um, we're going to be looking at inequalities now, and particularly we're going to solve inequalities, we're going to look at a word problem, we're going to look at graphing, and then we're going to look at what they call systems of inequalities when you have two and you have to find a solution. So, number one, right off the bat, you have 6 times x plus 1 is less than or equal to 12. With inequalities, if you divide or multiply by a negative, okay, attached to the x, you flip the sign. It goes in the opposite direction. So we need to keep that rule in mind as we go through this, okay? So here this is the distributive property. 6 times x gives me 6x. 6 times positive 1 gives me 6. It's greater than or equal to 12. I solve this as if I'm solving an equation. I subtract 6 from both sides. I get 6x is greater than or equal to 6. And in this situation, I divide by 6. That's not negative, so I keep the sign. x is greater than or equal to 1. So if I had a number line, and I'm going to go ahead and draw that, they had 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2. Let's just say I had that number line. You can go ahead and pause and, and draw that, but I'm going to continue. I'm going to put my dot at 1. It's going to be closed because there's a line underneath. And I'm going to follow the direction of the arrow so long as the x is on this side. Okay. It's greater than 1, so any number bigger than 1. Okay. Number 2. Solve like an equation. I'm subtracting 1 from both sides. And I get negative 3x is greater than 9. Well, now I have to divide. Okay by negative 3, x, I divide it by a negative, so I flip the sign, is less than negative 3. Okay. So here's my number line. The circle will be on negative 3, but open because there's no line underneath and go in the direction of the arrow. Any number that's less than negative 3, the arrow is going in that direction. Okay. Number 3. Here I have minus 2x minus 7 is less than or equal to 15. So in this case, I'm going to add 7. I get 2x greater than or uh, less than or equal to uh, 22. Dividing by a positive 2, so the sign stays the same. And x is less than or equal to 11. And now I'm going to draw my line. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Just drawing a random number line. Closed circle, because there's the line underneath at 11. And it's less than, so all the numbers less than 11. Okay, I'm going to draw the arrow in that direction. It's almost like this is an arrow too, right? I'm telling you where to go. Word problems. Dolly is going with friends to Gershon's Adventureland Park. Adventure Park. Dolly has $20 to spend on activities. Each video game costs $150 and each laser tag game costs six. What's the maximum amount she can um, think she could go on? So in this case, we're just trying to represent that as an inequality. 150x. We'll let video games be X and laser tag be Y, plus $6 per laser tag game. So 150 times the X, which is video games, 
plus six dollars times y, which is laser tag, will have to be less than or equal to 20. Can't be more than 20 because we only have 20 bucks to spend. So that's a way that you can algebraically represent that. Down at the bottom, graphing linear equations. Well, first off, we have to put it in that y equals or y is less than or equal to whatever form. So we're going to have to, down here, 4x minus 2y is less than negative 6. We have to solve for y, okay? So I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. That negative 2y is greater than negative 4x minus 6. And then I have to divide by that negative 2 to everything. And I get y. Sign changes because I divided by negative. Negative 4 divided by negative 2 is 2x. Negative 6 divided by negative 2 is positive 3. So go ahead and plot my y-intercept, which is 3. 1, 2, 3. Plot that point. And my slope is 2. So it's slope is 2 over 1. If it's a solid 2, put a 1 underneath. In the positive direction, remember Mr. Slope Man. Okay. So I go up 2. Okay. Up 2. Over 1. Plot a point. Or I could go down 2. Over 1. Plot a point. And I just continue filling that out. Down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, or up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. So go ahead and graph that line. Now there's no line underneath, so this line's going to remain dotted, okay? Or dashed. I'm not going to make a solid line, because it's less, like, uh, this says y is less than. So, Pretend that 2x isn't there, okay? Just say y is less than 3. So you go to 3, and all the numbers, it says it's less than, we shade down. Okay, it says y is less than 3, let's shade down, okay? y is less than the 3. So this is your y-axis, 0, negative 1, you know, all those numbers less than. Okay, in this particular case, it's already, we don't have to simplify, it's already been simplified. This is a plus if you can't see. But you go up to 2. And our slope, since there's nothing in front of it, it's 1. So it's 1 over 1. So you go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. Or down 1 over 1 in the positive direction. Because your slope is positive. And because... I think I did this right. Okay. And because there's a line underneath, the line is not dashed, it's solid. Okay? It's a solid line. And y is less than or equal to 2. So y is less than 2. Meaning you go 2 and you go down. Okay? All right? Here's two inequalities. We're going to graph both of them. It's called systems of inequality. It shouldn't say equations. It should say inequalities. We're going to see where the two lines uh, intersect, and that is a solution. Okay? So, positive. Th we'll graph this one first in purple. Starts at positive 3, because that's my y-intercept. My slope is 2, so it's 2 over 1. It means I go up 2 and over 1. I go down 2 and over 1, down 2 and over 1, and so forth. Since the line is solid underneath, I make a solid line. And it says y is greater than 2x plus 3. So I start at the 3, and y is greater, so I shade up. We know it's greater because it's eating the y, the little alligator mouth eats the y. Okay? Now I use my red pen, and I go down to negative 4. My slope's negative, so it's going to be a downhill line, okay? 
So I go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and over to 5. Okay. And it's going to be a solid line. And it says y is less than negative 4. So I shade everything below negative 4. The line, you know, I shade the bottom side of the line. Because it says y is less than that negative 4. Okay. Right here is where those two lines intersect. Okay. But any point that's in this region works as a solution. So like negative 4, negative 3 is a solution. Negative 5, negative 2 is a solution. So you could put negative 4, negative 3, put negative 5, negative 2. Any point that falls into the mutually shaded area where they both overlap is a solution. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at number 8. In this case, we have to put that in a y equals form. So I'm going to do that up here. I have negative x plus 3y is less than 12. I'm going to add x to both sides. I get 3y is less than x plus 12. And I divide by 3 on each side. And I'm going to get y, uh oh, we're in the dark. y is less than, since it's x over 3, that's a 1 by the x. One third. I don't put the x on top of the fraction. I could, but I don't. Know. X plus four. I'm going to graph that line now. I'm going to go up to the four. It's my y-intercept. Okay, and it's one third. It's a positive line, so it's going to go in a positive direction. Up one over three, or down one over three. Since the line is uh, kind of open, there's no line underneath. It's just a dashed line. Okay. And it says y is less than that 4. So y is less than, go to 4 and shade down. Okay. Any of those points are a solution to this line. Well, we need to find a solution to both lines. Use my red pen. I go up to 4 again. And this time it's negative 1. So, you know, negative x is negative 1 over 1x, okay? So up 1 over 1 is going to go in the negative direction. Down 1, down 1 over. Okay. And it's also a solid line. And in this case, y is bigger than 4. Okay. So I go 4 and I go up. And that's the point where they intersect. That's often the solution they want. So, you know, they might want to say 0, 4 is a solution. But in this case, since it's a dashed line, I won't include that. Anything in this shaded region could be a solution. Okay? So, like, for example, 3, 3. Or 2, 4. All right, now we have to find a solution to those, okay? This is a system of equations. These should all be equal signs. I don't know. I was, I don't know, a little wacko, I guess. They should all be equal signs. I'll fix them on your papers. But now we need, if these were equal signs, then the solution would be the point where the two lines intersect on a graph, the point where the two lines intersect. But if you're given two lines, you want them to be in AX plus BY equals C form, and you can solve using elimination, substitution, graphing, or a personal favorite of everybody's, the matrix way. So we're going to take a moment to pause. This is part one. and part two, we're going to look at how to solve this with the matrix way, okay?